want to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 will cover most of what we're going to speak today. The giver of gifts. Is our God a giver of gifts? Or what? Hallelujah. Of course, it begins with the most familiar gift of all in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he did something. He gave. He gave his only begotten son. There's no gift that will ever compare to the gift of his own son. Hallelujah. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died on the cross so I and you do not have to perish. What a gift. What a gift. You know the things we ask for and we want for Christmas. And sometimes we get what we want and, and sometimes we don't. But rarely do we remember uh, the best gift we ever got. The best gift we ever received. But I can tell you without question or doubt, the best gift that has ever been given and the best gift we have ever received is the gift of God's own Son. Jesus is the reason for the season. We're told in the scripture that God loves a cheerful giver. How many of you know it is more blessed to give than to receive? And God loves a cheerful giver because it is the nature of God to give. And so it should be our nature to be more and more like Him and to take on an attitude of cheerful giving. Somebody once said, I think it was Earl Roberts, but nonetheless, somebody once said, God loves a hilarious giver. Amen. I've been to churches where they stand and clap when it's offering time. I won't ask that of you, but be cheerful. Be cheerful. I, I told the choir during their song, Joy to the World, that they got to show joy. I, I didn't even look up to see if they showed enough joy. But uh, it is a joyous season. We were driving through these beautiful lights down here at 133rd, Nanyok, whatever name that is. And, we're driving through the lights. And my favorite one of all is the house that has J-O-Y in these big letters that light up and, and alternate the lighting. It's just very impressive. I, I would love to have those myself, but I won't steal them, I promise. Joy. God loves a cheerful giver. If we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. Every man is purposed in his heart. Friends, if it isn't from your heart, don't do it. From the heart. As he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I look forward to Jubilee Sunday. It is a great opportunity to finish my year right in the area of giving. And I'm thankful to God because he has so blessed us this year and the past. And we're looking forward to God's rich blessings in the future. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. How many believe God has enough grace for you tonight? Everything that you need, He has the hand to provide it. He has the ability to provide it and the sufficiency in all things that you may abound to every good work. Thank you, Lord, that you make all grace abound to us. Number four, giving causes. This is extraordinary. Verses 9 and 10. Giving causes our righteousness to remain forever. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. I, I don't suppose growing up or in, in my adult life I ever considered that giving was a part of our righteousness. Of course, giving in faith, faith always produces and imputes righteousness, but he is given abroad, dispersed abroad, given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. And later on in verse 10, he says that he will increase the fruits of our righteousness. How many of you know you cannot outgive God? I marvel every year how quickly money that I give to the Lord on this particular day, Jubilee Sunday, is returned to me. It's just stunning and amazing. And not only the amount that I give, but above of that amount, God has blessed. And I'm thankful for the increase of the fruits of our righteousness. Number five, giving brings enrichment and bountifulness. I have observed men and women who have discovered the joy of giving. And it has brought change in my life. Um, my tithe is required to go to the Kansas District Council of the Assemblies of God. And I have, what, 30, I don't know, 35 cards of ordination that said that I paid my tithes to the district. I'd rather pay it here, to be honest with you, but they'd, they'd kick me out if you don't pay your tithes. You can get away with anything, but you can't get away with not paying your tithes. 
The reality of giving shouldn't be a dead I owe, it's a seed I sow. Where have I heard that? <laughs> it is the blessing of God, and it brings enrichment to our lives and bountifulness to our lives when we give. Happy people are giving people. Happy people are giving people, and we are blessed and enriched by the bounty that God has given to us, and we give thanks to God. Finally, he concludes this subject in 2 Corinthians 9 and 15 by this word that you can take in the context of this chapter or out of context, either one, and it will still fly. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Is not the gift of God every day of our lives? Is it not indescribable? Unspeakable gift God has given and given and given. Many people in our society over Christmas time will spend a whole bunch of money and they'll put it on a plastic card, Visa or whatever. God doesn't need a card. He has unlimited resources. He is a giver, and he bestows gift upon gift upon gift to us. The greatest gift of all is the gift of his Son, and it is an indescribable and unspeakable gift. And this is one of my favorites, John 1 and 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Hallelujah. Every good and perfect gift is where? Thank God it's not from Macy's. Every good and perfect gift, hallelujah, cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Our God is a giver of gifts, and we, his people, should be cheerful givers of gifts. I believe when you give in faith that God will bless, he'll bring enrichment, bountifulness, he'll bless. He's promised a return on it. What a great investment it is. Thank God for his kindness to give, to give his own son. Seems to me like then that he deserves everything I am, everything I have, that all belongs to him anyway. He is the giver of gifts. He gave me my salvation. He gave me pardon for my sins. He gave me my family. He gave me you. I rejoice in it. And I know, I know, I know. I cannot out give God. If somebody could help step in there quickly to the kids.